Firstly, can I thank um, those that have travelled the distance to be here. Um, I've got my sister Sue over here, taking photos, putting them on Facebook, just letting everyone know back home. She can do that. I know. Okay. Um, hey, but she's travelled from Australia, as has my brother Jimmy. Um, Brent and Tracy, where are you guys? Over there. Travelled from Nelson today. Yeah. Um, just to be here. He's got open homes tomorrow. I can't believe it. Three <laughs> <laughs> uh, presentations. I'm, I'm feeling a bit ill about that, but nevertheless, you've made the choice to come up here and share in this special event with us, so I'm delighted with that. Rich and Lorna have come up from Ohiniwai, um, and so I'm very thankful for those that have travelled to be with us. I must apologise for those last year when I put on a bit of a function um, and I was sort of talking about not quite 50 yet. I think it, those that came and bought me really nice presents <laughs> thought it was like not quite 50 but it will be in a week's time when the party now, I can only hope that you guys don't report me to the Real Estate Agents Authority the misleading advertisers. <laughs> Too late. Can I say most of what I am today as a result of my upbringing and two people, where are mum and dad? Right here! <laughs> mum and dad have raised our family, and there's plenty of them here with, with a, a, a sense of community. Family is everything to us. It's the, uh, the ultimate value that they have instilled in us, and I'm ultimately thankful to mum and dad for raising us with um, all the values that will allow us to maximise our life, to actually get the best out of life, because ultimately your life is a reflection of what you give. And they have taught us that from day one. Here, here. Awesome. Now I must say, I, I feel um, very special now to have, um, uh, having found my soulmate in Jess, standing right beside me here. Um, very thankful for finding someone that actually understands me and we click so well and uh, she's an awesome uh, partner for me to have and great in the family environment that we've created here. My children, Jason and Charlotte here, I'm very proud of them both, both making their own way in the world. Jason finished his last exam for his pre-law, um, intermediate law, this afternoon at four o'clock. Um, Charlotte's already finished her exams for the year. Uh, both the ch children are doing me very proud in terms of how responsible they are going forward. Charlotte uh, is, is making great inroads with Rotaract president next year. She's been instrumental in bringing a number of members into Rotaract. Uh, she's a member of uh, the Young Nationals in West Auckland, which I'm also very proud of. Um, so I'm delighted that Jason is coming into Rotaract next year, whether you like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, you know, with Dad over there, 53 years in Henderson Rotary Club, three generations of Hendrixes in Henderson Rotary, there's a lot to be proud of there. Um, coming back to the environment that we create here for our children, um, Western and Scooter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the running around. Uh, we've created a wonderful environment. In fact, I'm a little concerned that the environment we've created is so good, I'm just a little concerned these kids are never going to leave home. <laughs> <laughs> they won't. <laughs> but one thing run, running a real estate business has taught me about being realistic um, and, and thinking about my future together with Jess. My parents last year celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary. Wow. Wow. Okay, that's, yeah. that's a milestone that anyone's got. Still going strong too, I might say. The reality is though, as most of you would be aware, Jess and I are engaged and our engagement party has sort of fallen by the wayside a little bit. We've had a 21st this year and a 50th. Um, Next week! <laughs> well, actually, you can all just stay the night. We'll just carry on tomorrow. Why not? All blacks are playing at 3 a.m. Um, oh, you've done it now. <laughs> but it has dawned on me that Jess and I are sort of planning to get married in March 2015. That if we are to achieve the same levels as my parents have, I'm going to be 111. <laughs> 
<laughs> you come from good Dutch stock, you'll be absolutely, absolutely. You'll still be running right Go Moses! <laughs> Clearly I'm very fortunate, there's no question about that, and I feel very fortunate that I found my soulmate and the love of my life. All right. Well done, well done, well done. What have I learned in my first 50 years? I'll say my first 50 years, I mean... There's another 50 to follow. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Coming back to what my parents have taught me, you only get out of life what you put into it. Yeah. At the end of the day, you can't expect anyone else to deliver stuff if you're not prepared to get out there and do it for yourself. Karma is a bitch. If you don't play by the rules of the universe, it's just going to come back and bite you in the, in the ass big time. So it's a case of owning your decisions. How you react to things that happen in your life is your decision. And you have every opportunity to decide how you're going to react to it. I'm very fortunate that I've had the guidance of a family and, and parents that have enabled us to <coughs> rationalise the best way to move forward with these things. But ultimately it's about owning it and deciding what you want for your life. And that's what I've learned in the last 50 years. My preference these days when I'm outside of work is to spend time with people that have substance. We live in a flaky society. Easy for me to say. <laughs> I was actually just speaking to Simon before and we were talking about a lunch that we had a couple of years ago and we arranged a three o'clock meeting at Sol Bar on Friday on a certain date and it was about a month out. I didn't speak to Simon until about 15 minutes before that lunch. He was in the cab uh, from the airport heading to the lunch and I was in my car heading to the lunch. We didn't need to speak again to know that we were both going to be there at, this, at that time. The society we live in these days is you need to check with people all the time. Are you still on for that? And unfortunately, I'm, that saddens me a little that we've lost that quality of commitment and doing what you say you're going to do. Fortunately, the people that are here tonight, apart from probably a couple of the gate crashed, um, <laughs> all have that quality because that's why you're here that's why you're my friends and family and I thank you so much for being here and being a part of our lives and being here to celebrate my 50th thank you very much indeed I believe my brother Richard has a word or two to say yeah yeah Hang on. can I get a seat Testing. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be ad living like Tom. I'm not in real estate. I don't have an iPad or an iPhone, so I'm going to read mine. 18th of November 1963, and West Auckland experienced a natural phenomenon. <laughs> My brother Tom was born the last in a fine line of European descent. It wasn't too long before he was out of the bassinet and into a cot, sharing a bedroom with Jimmy and myself. <laughs> if he grizzled in the morning when he woke, I warmed a bottle and put it in the kettle for him. And yes, even at that age, this guy could drink. <laughs> <laughs> Primary schooling started and he grew like a mushroom. He would wander home from, from Holy Cross and not ask mum what was for dinner, but what was for pudding. <laughs> Often, to mum's great pleasure, Tom would hastily knock up something for dessert for the family. What a bloody sweet tooth. <laughs> On to Liston College, where he made quite an impression. Soccer, tennis, anything where the challenge was to beat the opposition. At a particularly intellectual stage, he and his friends decided to get Mum's Ford Escort up the stairs and into the new library. The stairs were no problem, but they could not squeeze that car through the main doors. <laughs> academic excellence. <laughs> Leaving school and into the workforce, Tom made an impact wherever he went. 
his first visit to us Shearmilkers was in his latest purchase, a blue Mitsubishi Lancer. We had a seriously long gravel driveway, and here, in a tornado of dust, comes the screaming rocket. <laughs> yeah, says Tom. I knew if I went fast enough, I could get all four wheels off the ground on that hump. <laughs> We have had many, many visits to our farm over the years and Lorna and I enjoy them immensely. Tom spoils us with all sorts of goodies we wouldn't buy ourselves. That's farming. And... <laughs> Not just you, Rich. And <laughs> Love you, Dad. <laughs> and, uh, and Marco. <laughs> Tom spoils us with all sorts of goodies we wouldn't buy ourselves and invariably by the end of a session we are ringing Jimmy on the Goldie, Sue in the Outback or Gig in Holland. The joke is actually on us because we are completely incoherent. <laughs> and on that note, on a recent Hendrix family holiday in Noosa, Tom and Jess and Lorna and I shared a penthouse apartment. Wow, that was easy. Nothing, and I mean nothing, was an issue. And of course, most nights when everyone else bailed, the four of us would sit down for a few more shots. <laughs> Just to wind up a great day. Marvellous. Tom has the Midas touch. Might as well give it my best shot. <laughs> <laughs> he has built himself a formidable real estate business and over the last few years he has injected a huge amount of enthusiasm and horsepower into the Henderson Rotary Club. A luncheon that raises 20 odd grand is a pretty serious fundraiser. And interesting to hear the Prime Minister of New Zealand, John Key, inviting Tom to help the government sell Meridian shares because <laughs> Tom does selling so well. I am quite sure that if I ever am introduced to John Key, he will say, I know your brother Tom. <laughs> Tonight's festivities would not be complete without mentioning Jess. She has fitted straight into the loud, busy dynamo that is the Hendrix family who celebrate living. Well, it, actually, it's a family that celebrates celebrating. <laughs> Take a bow, Jess. We have never seen Tom contented and happy as he is now, and a large part of that is what you bring to his life. Oh. Oh. You have a big car, a big house, a big personality, and a huge heart. Mum and Dad and all of us are proud of you. You love people and you love life and you are cool to be around. We salute you. to say a few words on the occasion of my brother's, my brother Tommy's 50th, or Walt, as him and I have known each other these past 50 years. Or Wallace. Or Wallace. Yes. Growing, up with a, growing up with a brother so close in age has truly been one of the great joys in my life. The fact that he is one of the world's great sporting all-rounders and I am very competitive has been a source of somewhat less joy. <laughs> Whether it was one-on-one -on -one soccer in the backyard, tennis, petonk, table tennis, billiards, pretty much any sport you can name, chances are I was the one copping a pasting in the backyard. And as you can imagine, that sat very well with my need to win. But I don't think it's the reason why I've developed this nervous twitch. <laughs> Luckily, in the early days, the very early days, 
I was able to offset the pain of being beaten by my little brother <laughs> by beating on my little brother. <laughs> so imagine then the horror, the sheer horror for me when still well shy of my teenage years, my little brother suddenly became my big brother. <laughs> my much bigger fucking brother. <laughs> And not being the sharpest tool in the shed, I would still submit to regular beatings on the sporting arena, followed by, on occasion, just a regular plain old beating. <laughs> but I don't think it's a source of the nervous twitch that I've got. <laughs> Growing up, we always had a dog. And as we grew older, the dog group played an increasing part in our play fighting. In short, we would wrestle, Invariably, I would end up on the ground, pinned on the ground, Tommy sitting on me. He would then call over our ever-compliant dog. The dog would come over. He'd position him above my face and, and then tell him to sit. Which he would happily do. So yes, folks, it's fair to say I know what it feels like to have a couple of balls in your mouth. And I think that's the source of the nervous twitch that I've got. <laughs> As the years progress, I moved to Australia. A bittersweet time in my life. Sweet to be heading to a new adventure, but bitter to be leaving family, leaving my home and leaving, and leaving Walt behind. I've travelled home constantly and we've maintained our love of versing each other, though we've moved from the sporting arena to the rather more leisurely pursuit of playing cards and double solitaire in particular. And I'd like to say that I've reversed the trends, but alas, some things just never fucking change. I remember one Christmas a few years back. We were, we were up at Manly, deeply ensconced in a game of double solitaire, watched by our niece Rochelle. I was copying my customary shellacking <laughs> and taking it with my usual good grace. <laughs> I muttered, I'm getting reamed. <laughs> Tommy said to, uh, to um, Rochelle, do you know what getting reamed means, Rochelle? <laughs> she said, no, I don't, Uncle Tommy. Uncle Jimmy does. <laughs> I've now lived half my life in Australia, but we speak to each other each week. We, we share each other's joys, successes, learnings, triumphs. I've watched with immense pride as he's built a very, very, very uh, great business while raising two amazing children, uh, Jason and Charlotte, by being emotionally available and always there for them. I'm not sure that the world needs two more fucking lawyers, but... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Simon. <laughs> uh, joining Rotary and becoming president in two years has shown that he's prepared to give of himself while he has very little time to himself. Over the last few years, it has brought me even greater joy to see that he's finally met his true life partner and the love of his life in Jess. And, and it's so great to see him finally completed and he's just flourished as a result. He really is the, she really is the final piece in the rather complicated Tommy Jigsaw. <laughs> <laughs> last, year, Lucy, last year Lucy and I spent five days in Paris with Tommy and Jess uh, before we went on our family trip. It was five of the best days of our lives and we, we just had such a great time. I think he even let me win a game of solitaire. <laughs> Possibly a one. Mate, you've always been my kid brother. You'll always be my best buddy. Oh, on you, Jimmy. That's how humble my brother is because the last time I was in Australia, he kicked my ass five zip in a double solitaire. And I didn't get a chance to get him in the game off him, but he's still allowing me to have that. Um, that, that win, but but short lived. Well, you've heard some great speeches.
Oh, and we've had, we've got another one. Clearly, <laughs> 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 I wasn't in charge of the agenda tonight. <laughs> so I'd now like to hand you over to my children. <laughs> We're going to read off the right. Hi, everyone. Obviously, we haven't known Dad for 50 years, so I'll speak to him. It'll be quite as entertaining. Uh, but as Dad's only children that we're aware of, we found, <laughs> and he's aware of, <laughs> we felt the need and requirement to say something. <laughs> Happy birthday, Dad. 50. Yeah. Big 5 -0. How do you feel? <laughs> it's, good to in the see... morning. <laughs> it's good to see that we friends know you quite well. You can see over there you got all the alcohol. Yeah. Good collection. Yeah. So you've been an enormous part of our life, Charlotte and I. Whether you like it or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially in the uh, helping us in our pursuit of education. You have supported us in every choice that we've made as long as it leads to a you know quite a reasonable job <laughs> yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so you've supported us in university our textbooks and everything you've definitely helped us along the way uh, you can see you see students around they've got nothing compared to what we have our dad is definitely the most supportive dad I've seen around awesome. cool yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so dad and I do quite a few fatherly activities with the son and uh, we do things like quad biking and cycling and just recently we've kind of we've been quad biking quite a bit um, when, when we began quad biking um, I was quite a bit younger we were just riding just you know basic little quad bikes and uh, I remember one time we were on a trail and it was just dad and I no other no other quad bikers and uh, I went behind dad and dad went off and then I remember I got lost in my quad bike and then it took me a long time to come to grips where Dad was, find out where I was, and then uh, he uh, never, he's never, he's never yet lost, um, he's always been behind me now, so he's always watched my back. So, <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so another thing is cycling. Um, I remember how much I used to hate cycling when Dad forced me to do it because, you know, I was, let's be honest, you know, when I was a bit younger, I was a bit, a bit more, Charlotte said today, I was, I was a bit out, overweight, um, oh, thanks Charlotte, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, wow, yeah, so, um, Dad and I always used to go cycling to get me encouraged and to, you know, exercise and that sort of thing, <laughs> But, um, now you're 300 meters ahead of Yeah, and that's where I'm getting to. So, like, I remember I always had to push it to keep up with my dad, or else he'd be long gone. I mean, like, now I, it's the other way around. Yeah, yeah. So, I tell you now, now dad is the one that's left behind. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I really didn't know that. But, but um, yeah, so I'll pass the mic on to Charlotte and she'll continue on. Indeed. Yeah. Nice work. Where is Growing up through Holy Cross Primary, we were always known, well I wasn't, I don't know about you, always known as the daughter of Tom Hendricks and yeah. all the kids would give me so much grief because, oh I saw your dad sign, oh I saw your dad sign, I'm just yeah. like, yeah that's really cool, they're like, I know your home phone number, and I'm just like, yes, dad's successful, that's great, and I was known as the kid whose dad had the Holden Commodore, so that's how I grew up with that famous dad, and I still get that every single day, by the way, just to make your head that little bit bigger. <laughs> so there's quite a few life lessons that I have learned from dad in my 21 years. Do you need to share them all now? Sure. <laughs> if it doesn't work out once, twice, Three times a charm. <laughs> Do you get it? Me! Okay. <laughs> and I've also. I'm a rich chief. Three times a charm. That's how you're like, oh, fuck, that's funny. I've learned the <laughs> invaluable nature of a prenup. <laughs> Probably come become quite accustomed to is that no, no food has an expiry date. <laughs> Nothing has an expiry date. It doesn't matter if cheese is covered in mold, it can be cut off and <laughs> <laughs> well, the 
doomed. You're not gonna die. Yeah, that came from you, old Pranoma. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Something else that has become quite important to me when it comes to law, because law is a lot of social mixing, and you need to be able to talk to and communicate with a wide range of people. Growing up, I've always, we've always had a home that has just been a constant influx of people, a whole lot of different people, in and out of every single different kind of culture and position and I've learned growing up how to talk to people and communicate with people and not hide in my room and so that's a huge skill that I think is due to you dad so I can go into a room with John I can sit at a table with John Key, Paula Bennett so some of the biggest people, the mad butcher, biggest people in New Zealand <laughs> Oh yeah, 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 everyone, and I can feel quite at home having an ordinary conversation with them, and I think that's a large fact, like due to the fact that I have been grown up with constant people in my life. Um, sorry, my notes. Something else I've also learned, which I bring into relationships, the man is always right. <laughs> always. <laughs> I will have a guy problem and I'll bring it home and I'll be in a mega half and I'll just be like, Dad, like Matt did this, blah 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 and Dad's like, good on him. <laughs> and he's like, fucking chicks. <laughs> but in the end, we know that if Matt ever really actually hurt me, Dad would kill him. <laughs> I've learned a lot through Dad about controlling your fate. You control your destiny. You have the power to do whatever you want. And I think that's a large reason why I pursue law. I He got me into Rotary Act and he's pushed me so hard into everything. And I don't really know if I would be as involved in everything and as successful as I am if it wasn't for his guidance. All right. uh, yeah. All right. um, this sounds good to me. <laughs> Just to finish up, um, I'm incredibly, incredibly proud of you, Dad. And nothing in your life has, nothing's come easy. Uh, this, everything here is a result of hard work. It wasn't luck, it wasn't inheritance, it was pure hard work. And the only thing that has come easy to us is our family. We are incredibly, incredibly blessed to have such an amazing family. And <laughs> that is something that Dad has constantly reiterated as important to us. That's one thing that we don't have to work hard for. Your family has just come to us and we're so, so lucky and so blessed. Some of my cousins are my best friends and it's amazing. There's a bond that you're never going to have with any other, any other person. Like your blood and family is just so important and that's everything Dad has given us and I'm so grateful for it. Jess, you're amazing. You know I think you're amazing. <laughs> Jess is one of my best friends as well as Mother-in-law, no. <laughs> sister-in-law. <laughs> yes. yeah. It makes me beyond happy and ecstatic that Dad has found you, and oh, cool. I look forward to the wedding because I get to wear a label dress. That was a condition. It was a condition. <laughs> but yeah, um, we're incredibly lucky to have. Tom is our dad, incredibly lucky and blessed and we love you so much and we wish you 50, no, 61 more years of happiness <laughs> to reach your 60 years yeah. anniversary. Yeah. yeah, mathematician. <laughs> Happy birthday, Dad, we love you. <laughs> Your lawyer writes, Tom Senior is paid for it. Can I say I'm speechless? <laughs> Probably wouldn't cut it. But clearly, I'm incredibly proud of my children and our family, and coming back to my parents, um, it all emulated from there. The standards, the values, um, that's where it all started and another thanks to Mum and Dad for that.